to declare you got victory. Sheila Simpkins, and I would like to welcome each and every one of you to Solid Rock Church of God in Christ. 
We are so happy that you have joined us today. Look around your home. Anybody that's not sitting here watching, you got to pull them in, amen, because you are getting ready to hear a powerful word from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. So again, happy that you're here and we would like to welcome you again to the solid rock church of god in christ amen i'm going to ask that you would please God, amen. amen to bow your heads amen and close your eyes let us pray amen let us say a word to the lord amen father god in heaven we love you we thank you god we thank you for what you've already done god how you've made ways out of no way. God, you even healed our bodies. God, you've given us a mind to hold on. We need you as ever before. God, we're in a terrible time. Time and trouble is everywhere. We're counting on you today, God. We look to you for our help. God, you are a way out of no way. God, hear our cry now. In the name of Jesus, hear us now, oh God. We need you, God. We need you to undertake, God. We need you to represent us in this world, for we are going in the wrong direction. God, our nation is under siege. God, everywhere you look, there's trouble. Help us now, God. Do what you can do, God. Speak to our minds, our hearts. God, we're counting on you. You are our help in a time of trouble. Your word said you are nailed in a sure place, a bridge over troubled water. Help us now, God. Speak to our mind. Give us what to say and how to say it. Teach us how to go in, God, and how to come out amongst your people. Teach us how to hold on to our faith, God, even when times are troubled. Look at what's going on right now. God, we need your strength. We need your ability, God, down in our inward parts. Teach us how, God. Thou art a teacher sent by God. Sit on your help, God. We're calling on your name. We're calling on your name. There's no other name given under heaven where men and women can be saved. Save us now, God. Save our leaders, God. Save our churches, God. Save our wives. Save our children, God. Save our homes. God, even save our jobs. We need resources. Help us now, God, is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. God bless you. If you have your Bibles today, would you open with me to Psalm 91. Psalm 91, beginning at the first verse. Let us read together. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings thou shalt trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is the, my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee and keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shalt bear thee up in their hand, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him, and I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I shall answer him, and will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him. May God add a blessing and to the reading and hearing of his word. 
God bless you.
As was stated earlier by my wife, thank you so very much for joining us today. It is an absolute pleasure and honor that you chose to worship with Father Rock, Church of God in Christ today. Let me share with you as we prepare our hearts to be a blessing to the ministry. What we're really doing is sowing into our own lives. We're sowing into our own futures, sowing into our families. God's word is sure. I'm reminded of a passage of scripture in the Old Testament when Joshua found himself in the time of famine. And in that time of famine, he did not let the famine invade what he did for God. So his faith was sure regardless of what was going on on the outside. It says in Genesis chapter 26, and I'll just begin reading at verse number 12. Now remember, this is at the time of famine when there is not much available. But the Bible says, Then Isaac sowed into the land, and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him, and the man waxed great, and went forward and grew until he became very great. This scripture promises that when you sow into the land that which God has given you, the Bible says that he will make you in your name great, He'll make you grow in greatness until you become very great. Now, that does not necessarily mean that you have all of the money or have all of the cars. It says that you'll be healthy. It says that you'll have peace. It says that God will walk with you even the most difficult hours of your life. And so today, let me challenge all of you to sow into your land, sow into your family. Amen. We're asking everyone to sow in your tithes and your offerings. Tithes are tenth, even the word means tenth. So you sold the, you sold the first ten percent of your increase into ministry, and then you give a free will offering. Now understand that the tithe is not your sacrifice; it's what we give back to the to the Lord because of what He has done for us. Your sacrifice is your offering. So let me encourage each of you. Now you can give with Givelify, you can give with the Cash app. You can give, glory to God, with PayPal, or you can, of course, mail in your offerings to 5970 Thornton Avenue, Newark, California, 94560. God bless you all. Thank you so much for your liberality. Welcome to Solid Rock Church of God in Christ, Newark, California, Tracy, California, where Superintendent Gerald K. Simpkins is the pastor, and First Lady Sheila Ann Simpkins is the First Lady. Worship service at 11.30 a.m. on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Join us on Zoom for Bible study, Sunday school at 10.15, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Prayer, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 12 noon, Tuesday and Thursday at 6 a.m. in the morning. Calling all brothers, Solid Rock Man of Valor presents Man Cave, every second and fourth Monday at 7 p.m., a private sanctuary where, where men sharpen men, sharing life experiences. Thursday mornings, fresh bread with Superintendent Gerald K. Simpkins Sr. every Thursday at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live. Do you enjoy video editing and live streaming or would you like to learn? Join the Solid Rock Audio-Visual Team Ministry. Training will begin the week of May 31st, 2020. This role requires making a long-term commitment, always being prayerful, reliable, and resourceful, and you must be at least intermediate level using a computer and open to using new technology. If this describes you, contact Lanita Hunter via email for more information at lanita.phr at gmail.com. Beauty for Ashes. Ladies, yes. Let's get together for a powerful exchange of experiences and encouragement and hear what God has to say about it all. Join the Solid Rock Women of Excellence on the first Tuesday of each month at 6 p.m. on the Solid Rock Zoom line. For more information, please contact Missionary Adrian Bennett. These are your announcements. Govern yourselves accordingly.
quickly we forget the God that lives in every day. How easy to lose sight that you reside in the Monday. How quickly we forget the power that's running through our veins. The kind of power that empties graves. And oh my soul, remember who you're talking to. The only one who death bows to. That's the God who walks with you. And oh my soul, you know that if he did it then, that he can do it all again. His power can still raise the dead. So don't tell me that he's finished. Let's we not forget the voice that's holding back the waves Was once the voice that told the skies to pour them into place Let us join the endless song of everlasting praise only God who empties graves And oh my soul Remember who you're talking to The only one who death bows to That's the God who walks with you And oh my so you know that if he did it then that he can do it all again his power can still raise the dead so don't tell me that he's finished yet hearts for the word of the Lord. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Father, we love you today. God, we stand in your presence as an empty vessel before a full fountain. Pour into us that we might pour into your people. We need you, Lord. This is a time, if there ever has been a time, that we need a word from the Lord. Just one word, God, that will change our circumstance, that will lift our souls, that will encourage our hearts, give us strength to go forward. And so, God, today, speak to us, God. Speak, God, and we will give you glory and honor, and we'll give you praise. And, God, when you stop, we'll stop. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. Today, I want to honor the Lord again for being saved and for being filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm so grateful that God has given us an opportunity on this first Sunday uh, in uh, June in 2020. Amen. And we're grateful to stand before such a great cloud of witnesses. Thank you to all again of the visitors and all of those family members that are here to share with us. I need to share with you a word today that uh, the Lord brought to me, and I wanted to go to another scripture, find another scripture, but the uh, Lord kept bringing me back to one that's very, very familiar with all of us. Amen. And uh, uh, I wanted to go here to the book of Daniel, and I'm going to talk about something, glory to God, that is that most of us learned uh, when we were, well, if we were in the church, we learned in the card class, they called it. Amen. But if we haven't, we still have heard about, amen, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. And I'm going to read that right now uh, in Acts chapter 3, excuse me, in Daniel chapter 3, verse number 19. Daniel chapter 3, verse number 19. Don't go to Acts, you won't find it there. But Daniel chapter 3, verse number 19. The Bible says, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
he spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats and in their trousers and in their turbans and even in their outer garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's uh, command was urgent or fierce, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flames of fire killed those men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the furnace. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. Uh, then the king Nebuchadnezzar was, and he arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, did not we cast three men bound in the middle of the fire? And the folks around him said, yes, king, we did. He said, but look, I see four men loose. I see four men loose, and they're walking in the midst of the fire. They are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went forth, uh, went forth to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, I want you to come out, come out here to me. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the midst of the fire. Oh, God, that's a message right there. Came out from the midst of the fire, and the princes and the administrators and the governors and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not even singed, nor was their garments affected. In fact, the smell of fire was not even on them. The smell of fire was not even on them. I, I know there might not be anybody else in the room with you, but if there's not, uh, speak to yourself and tell yourself, I don't even look like what I've been through. Glory to God. I don't even look like what I've been through. Listen, I want to talk to you today uh, with all of this shutting in and sheltering in and going through what we're going through. Glory to God. And uh, you can be full of uh, a power and passion and the Holy Ghost, but you're human and sometimes these thoughts come to your mind and they kind of mess with you a little bit. Glory to God. But I want you to understand, listen, don't be discouraged because you are coming out of the fire. Glory to God. Don't be discouraged because you are coming out of the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you over there, sister. Glory to God. You're coming out of the fire. Glory to God. You are most, uh, uh, most often the mountain of our elevation is only experienced or enjoyed after enduring the valley of our tribulation. It, it is going through what we're going through, what we've gone through, what we're dealing with that allows us to mature and to grow and develop in what God has for us. Uh, but you've got to understand that you are destined for greatness. Yes, yes, yes. You are destined for greatness. you got to understand, glory to God, that I'm not talking about greatness like uh, they're going every time you go to the store, folks are going to be calling out your name. I'm not talking about the fact that you're going to see your name in life. Uh, greatness is not necessarily those things. But I believe that greatness is causing your family to accept the Lord into their lives or at least appreciate the God of your life. I believe that's greatness. Uh huh. I believe that greatness, glory to God, is ministering and serving people who do not have the means of blessing you back. To me, that's greatness. Uh huh. Greatness is trusting the Lord with all your heart and not being guided by your own perceptions of life, but in all of your ways, following the Spirit of God, which will direct your path. I believe that these are identifiers of God's greatness in an individual's life. Glory to God, help me right now. Uh, you've got to understand, notwithstanding the fact uh, that you must be prepared to withstand these attacks that come against you in this life. Yeah, you're going to be in the fire, but you've got to be able to deal with it. You've got to be able to uh, stand against the attacks of your, against your integrity, the attacks against your character, or even your personal body. Glory to God. Often the opposition you face are unrelenting. 
They're multi-directional, uh, and they're even sometimes personal. But we are not unaware of the enemy's devices. Glory to God. We're not unaware of his tactics or his strategies. you got to understand that Paul kind of dealt with this thing when he dealt with those uh, in Ephesus. And he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He tells them to put on the whole armor of God that they may be able to stand against the tricks and strategies, the wiles of the devil. For we do not uh, wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this present world and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. He said, therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to stand. Glory to God. Ah, and in the evil day, having done all the stand, stand therefore. Glory to God. You've got to understand that God has given you everything necessary to fight against the attack of the enemy. Now, I know, you know, sometimes we think that it's coming against people, but understand spiritual spirits work through people many times. And so it might seem like the person in your home. It might seem like the person on your job. It might even seem, glory to God, like your spouse is the one that's causing you problems. But the enemy is working through both them and you to create dissension in your family and separation in your heart. Uh, glory to God. That's the enemy at work. Glory to God. And they're not there many times don't even know it. Glory to God. They're not trying to hurt you. They're not trying to bring you down. But the enemy is working against them just like he's working against you. Oh God, help me today. Glory to God. Even though you're in the fire, don't worry, you ain't going to burn up. Glory to God. You ain't going to burn up. Glory to God. Glory, you ain't going to burn up. Glory to God. And so I want you to understand that you can't quit. You can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. Yeah, when Paul uh, spoke again, he spoke to the Galatians, and he says, don't be weary in well-doing. Glory to God, for in due season, you will reap if you do not faint. Listen, I've got to tell you today, hold on. Your due season is coming. Come on, tap yourself on your own chest. Excuse me for the noise, but you ought to say to yourself, my due season is on its way. My due season. It's on its way. Glory to God. Let me get on to point number two. Glory to God. You will face some hot situations. You, you, you're going to face some hot situations. Uh, what are you talking about, brother? Pastor, well, when your children get into serious trouble, that's fire. That's a hot situation. Uh-huh. When you lose your job after you just bought a new car, I want you to know that's a hot situation. Uh-huh. When a serious illness attacks you, or one of your loved ones, that's a hot situation. Glory to God. When depression moves into your home and just won't leave, act like it's paying rent, but it ain't paying nothing but pain, that's a hot situation. Glory to God. But I've got news for you, folks. Glory to God. Would you tell somebody in the room with you, tell them, glory to God, I'm not in this alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not in this fire by yourself. Glory to God. God is walking around. Ah, King Nebuchadnezzar looked in the furnace and he saw the Spirit of God in the vision of a man walking with the people of God. Glory to God. You ought to reach up and grab God by his hand and tell him, thank you for walking with me, Lord. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you for encouraging me. Glory to God. you got to get this down in your spirit. Glory to God. You're not alone. Matter of fact, the Lord speaks through uh, the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah 43, and he says, But now thus said the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You belong to me. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Ah, when you go through the rivers, he said, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through fire, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord your God. He tells us Jesus is with you in the fire, and when you come out, you're not even going to smell like smoke. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. I've got God on my 
my side. And even though I'm going through a hot situation, even though I'm going to deal with some difficulty, God is on my side. And God's got me covered. Look at somebody and tell them one more again. Glory to God. Don't be discouraged. You're coming out of this thing. You're coming out. And, and, and it isn't it good. Go look in the mirror and tell yourself you don't look like what you've been through. Glory to God. Yeah, you don't look like what you've been through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is on your side. So understand, saints of God, we've got some stuff going on in America today. We've got some difficulty. Fires are breaking out. Glory to God. Trouble is everywhere. Glory to God. But you've got to understand something here. God is still in control. A whole bunch of folks uh, in this last eight weeks have learned that scripture in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. They can quote it now. Glory to God. They didn't even heard of Chronicles before that. It used to be two Chronicles. But I'm going to try to tell you right now. Glory to God. Folks is quoting now. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sins. He said, I'll heal your lands. But you've got to understand, I'm glad that you are quoting it now, but too many people are quoting it and not living it. Too many people are holding on. He said, glory to God, if you are glory to God, my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Uh, are you really seeking the Lord's face? Are you really looking for his will to cover your life? Are you really asking God, have your way in my life? Glory to God. That means, glory to God, that you're going to tell some folks that call you late at night they can't come over. Glory to God. You're going to tell some folks you ain't sheltering in with me. Glory to God. you got to understand. Hallelujah, God. I'm talking to somebody today. Uh, if you're really going to do the will of the Lord, you're going to spend some time on your knees. Glory to God. You're going to spend some time and not do drive-by prayer service. Glory to God. But wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. Let him, after you get through praying, glory to God, if there's anybody in the room, would you tell them when you get through asking God, wait for his answer. Glory to God. Woo! Oh God, I wish I was talking to somebody today. Hallelujah. My time is about out. Hallelujah. My time is about out. But this world is going through some changes. Glory to God. We got some stuff going on now. Nobody ever expected. The Lord is getting our attention. We better get it now before it gets worse. We better hear him now before it gets worse. Glory to God. We got to support what's right. We got to abhor that which is evil. We got to walk with the Lord. We got to understand that we can't live by our flesh. But by the Spirit of God, because the flesh is against God. It's an enemy. Glory to God. When God saved you, you saved your soul. But your flesh is not saved. So your flesh, your flesh continues to want whatever it wants. But you got to have enough Holy Ghost in you to tell your flesh, not here. Not here, you're not. We're going to serve the Lord. The story is told. A preacher back in the day, they would go through when they come to town to preach, run revivals. They would generally stay with houses of the saints. One particular preacher traveling through the country, there somewhere around Florida, glory to God, he was there to do a revival in a little small town. And they had him stay at one of the mother's houses that was in the local church. And the preacher was there. That next morning, Mama got up, fixed him some homemade biscuits. You know, they had that bacon that they cut them big old slabs, and she cooked him up some bacon, made him some grits and gravy. That's my kind of breakfast. Made him up a wonderful breakfast, and that thing was going on, but while she was cooking, she heard some noise in the back. Got a little bit disturbed, and she said, what is that going on back there? I know that preacher ain't got another person in my house. So she kind of eased back to the back and peeked in the door. And the preacher was in that room on his knees and he was saying, no, you not. You go fast today. The Lord told us to fast and we go fast. I don't care how good that bacon smell. We fast in the day. Glory to God. You got to tell yourself we're going to do what God said and not what my flesh wants. Listen, you're in the fire. But the fire is not going to burn you up because not only are you in the fire,
God bless you today. Would you bow your hand? Now, Father, we love you today. We give you glory and honor. We give you praise. We understand, God, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. We understand, God, that we're more than conquerors because we love you. We're more than conquerors. We understand that all things work together for our good because we are the called of the Lord. We understand, God, that you said, Lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the earth. We understand, God, and we appreciate that. And now, God, we make commitment to you to be the saints you called us to be, to be honorable, faithful, and loving men and women, men that appreciate the word of God so much so that it directs our lives. Now, God, if there's anybody out there right now struggling with sickness in their body, I bind it now. You declared, God, that by your stripes we are healed in the book of Peter. God, you said that no weapon formed against us was proper. God, God, prosper. God, you also said, glory to God, that we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, glory to God, there's nobody in your house but you, but lay hands on your own self and declare sickness. You got to go in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you today for the word of the Lord and the people of God. On this first Sunday of June, in the year 2020, God bless us. We've had the first half of the year to pass, and now as we go into this second half, I want to be closer than I've ever been to your will for my life. Thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm going to read in your hearing 1 Corinthians, found in the 11th chapter, amen, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord and which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, that same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This is the cup in the New Testament of my blood. This do ye often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eat it and drink it damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we will judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. May God have a blessing to the reader and hearers of his word. God bless you. Praise God. Asking everyone to bow their heads to me in prayer. Every eye closed. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we ask, O oh Lord, we thank you, Lord, because you, your body was broken for us. Lord, you took a, our place on the cross. You were broken and you shed your blood for us that we may be whole, that we may be saved. God, we thank you right now. Bless the bread that is broken in representation of your body. O oh God, and the cup that represents your blood that was shed for us. God, we thank you right now that we, oh God, remember you. Remember that you were broken for us. That you shed your blood for us, oh God, that we can be saved. Lord, we thank you right now. God bless your people, Lord. You said, oh God, that through your broken body and through your broken, oh God, the blood that was shed, God, that we would be able to be one with you, that you would be with us, that you could dwell in us by your spirit. Oh God, through the forgiveness, through the propitiation of our sins, God, you would dwell on the inside so that no matter where we are, you're right there with us. You dwell in us. No matter what we're going through, you're going through it with us, Lord, because you dwell on the inside. God, we thank you right now. Bless your people everywhere. 
in the name of Jesus. Bless those, oh God, that don't know you yet as, a, your sa- as the Savior of their lives. God bless them to come to you in faith, God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way everywhere in your people. Have your way, God, right now. God, we trust safely in you. We love you and we trust you. Asking, oh God, that you continue to bless in the name of Jesus. God, have your way right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you today. It is our manner to celebrate uh, the broken body and the shed blood of our Lord on first Sundays. And so this first Sunday in June, uh, we gather to celebrate that tremendous, that high day, this wonderful ordinance of our church. I'm going to ask all of you at home with us if you will get a cracker, amen, just a piece of cracker or a small piece of bread, and then some grape juice uh, or a juice if you have, amen. And then we're going to celebrate communion together. This is a time when we commemorate the broken body and the shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As I prepare to serve these, would you take that time, amen, to get your communion, amen, and we will partake together. Body of the Lord. Body of the Lord. Body of the Lord. Blood of the Lord, my Blood of the Lord, my brother. Blood of the Lord, my brother. God bless you. The Bible declares that on the night when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and broke it, gave to each of his disciples, and said to them, Take and eat all of it, for it represents my body, which is broken for you. The body of the Lord, my brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And in like manner afterwards, he took the cup, this cup that represents the New Testament in his blood. The Lord declared, As often as you eat this bread, Drink this cup. You do show my death until I shall return again. And people, I need you to know that the Lord is coming back again. Please share with us the blood of the Lord, my brother. God bless you. As we prepare to depart this, this service today, I want to remind you, glory to God, that this coming week on Thursday, we will have Fresh bread, amen, at 10 a.m. for 10 minutes. Join us on Facebook Live and be blessed by that inspirational word. Glory to God. Additionally, I want you to join us on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. At that time, we have Bible study, and that Bible study is held on Zoom. Glory to God. Join us and be blessed by the study of God's word. This week is part two of how to grow in faith. Amen. I want to encourage all of us, amen. The Bible says, uh, as they got through with that communion service, they sang a hymn and they went out. Please have a wonderful and blessed week in the Lord.
Never, never do it. Why will you see? I 